Hi, hi, Year 12. Sorry, I was just reading a very good book that I'm going to speak about in a moment. Uh, welcome to Politics. I'm Miss Walker and I am the Head of History. And I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what you can expect after the summer and what kind of things we're going to be learning about in politics. So first of all, uh, as I said, I'm Miss Walker and we are, you are taught by the History Department for Politics. Um, so we're very much interwoven. So you'll either be taught by me, Mr. Patterson or Miss Higgs or a mixture of both, as I will talk about later. So we expect you to do a lot of reading and being very well informed citizens uh, in politics. And so this is a book that I've just started reading, uh, AC Grayling, who's a political philosopher on the nature of democracy. It's called The Good State and it's a really good read. I may let you borrow it. So um, I like puns be watching Agatha Christie films, vegetarian curry, and winning at Twitter arguments. And luckily, by doing politics, you have a much better chance at winning those arguments. So it's not all about arguing though, and it's mostly about debating, but let's have a look at some of the things that we're gonna be talking about. So I say this every year, but it could not be a better time to study politics. Politics is lively, controversial and relevant. Most of these pictures are just from the last couple of days. So we have Colston's statue being toppled as a result of the Black Lives Matter protest. We do lots on protests. We look at reasons behind protests. We look at whether protest is effective. So we talk up there about the legality of that and whether it is going to have a good impact on um, the cause. Obviously, we've got everything that's going on in America with George Floyd's death, which obviously sparked these protests across the world. So we have uh, Donald Trump's reaction. He's there standing in front of a church with the Bible and look at kind of the media reaction to that and all of those different things. Uh, we also have here this idea of kind of the generational divide that seems to be in politics at the moment. I don't know whether that's necessarily true for you, but that's the kind of thing we're going to be talking about. So this idea of like the baby boomers versus the millennials and this kind of this idea that people are not quite connecting and that their idea of Britain is very different. So that's the kind of thing we're going to be thinking about. Um, and obviously then we have uh, Boris Johnson doing one of his COVID updates. I'm going to talk about kind of, you know, his use of slogans him as a prime minister and compare him to the President Trump as well, because we do UK and US politics. So hopefully you've already started to think about these kind of questions. And in fact, you might know the answer to some of these, but this is the kind of thing we start to think about at Hayesford Mix 6. Why did Donald Trump get into the White House despite winning 2.8 million less votes than Hillary Clinton? So obviously that's to do with the electoral system and that's what we're going to be looking at. So the electoral college and why that happened. What is going to happen with Brexit? It hasn't gone away. It is happening. It's obviously been a little bit less in the news because of the COVID pandemic, but it is a really important thing that's going to have a huge impact on your lives and our lives. So it's something we need to look at. We look at feminism and we look at things like why is there a gender pay gap still? We look at the protests, as I said, and look at things like civil rights. We'll look at the issue of police brutality in the US and the UK and link that with the Constitution and ideas like that. So that's British and US politics. Um, but we start with political ideas, which is actually my favourite topic, because it really gives you a sense of where everyone stands, what we mean when we talk about these terms, if someone says they're conservative or socialist, what that actually means, okay? And we've already asked you to look at your political compass and this might actually help you kind of start to put everything together and really think about what these things mean. And maybe help you start to question some of your own beliefs as well, because that's a huge and really important part of politics. There are two other modules apart from that and you have an exam on each one at the end, but we'll talk more about the exam uh, once you are in the sixth form. So um, we do the UK political system. We look at how Parliament works. We look at the House of Commons, the House of Lords. We look at arguments for reform in the House of Lords, for example. We look at who scrutinises the government, so the role of opposition. Look at things like PMQs. We look at devolution, which is particularly interesting at the moment if you think about the different reactions to the COVID pandemic by Scotland and Wales compared to England, for example. And we will look at Boris Johnson, the role of the 
his role as prime minister, his cabinet, and then we look at the Supreme Court and even the EU a little bit, although obviously it is having a diminishing influence. The second part of the UK course is about the actual politics themselves, so democracy, how people participate, so looking at voting, pressure groups, political parties, we think about whether certain age groups vote a certain way, hopefully dispelling some misconceptions you might have as well. We also look at um, the electoral system, so first past the post, and look at kind of arguments for and against that as well. So the US politics and government is a comparative module, I'll talk about that in a moment, but we do similar things. So we look at the US Constitution, we look at Congress, we look at the role of the president and the powers of the president. We look at the Supreme Court and the electoral process. We look at political parties, the Democrats and Republicans. And we look at things like civil rights and pressure groups, which is where the protest element comes in. So all very relevant. We also do a little bit of historical, so look at some um, past presidents and the same with the British prime ministers as well. Now, this is a comparative module. That does not mean you're comparing their hairstyles. They're looking a little bit similar there. It means that you look at kind of the powers, the processes and how democratic both countries are. OK, so it's a really interesting uh, comparative module and we'll teach you how to write essays like that as well. Now, we want you to think outside the box. I think the most important thing for doing politics and even teaching politics is that it makes you challenge your own misconceptions. It makes you challenge your own view as well. OK, so a lot of the time we want you to confidently debate and respond to different viewpoints. And we will teach you how to do that as well. And the best way to do that is to be really well informed about what's going on and then you can make your decisions. So we want you to be able to articulate your views and we also want you to be able to obviously get this into writing. So write analytical essays using historical and political examples. And all of these things will help you if you go into university where you do dissertations and you know, you're having seminars with debates and things like that. It would be very much set you up for that kind of setup. So we do so many enrichment activities. I've got a few couple of slides about this. Um, so we work with the politics project. So we've done um, a few online Q and A's with MPs. So we have them a bit like this on a Skype session. And we get to talk to them and ask them questions. Uh, I am currently working with the University of Exeter on a project on power. So we'll look at kind of the origins of power and actually a little bit of kind of ancient history coming in there as well. But it's really interesting to look at how power has developed and how democracy has developed from the original kind of Greek ideas. We have hosted lots of things in the Roper Theatre. So any questions, for example, we've had local hustings and obviously we have votes in there as well. We have an annual visit to Parliament. We get to tour the House of Commons, the House of Lords, and we get to meet and talk to our MP, so Vera Hobhouse um, for Bath. We also have Parliament speakers coming into lessons as well. Um, we always aim high for our um, students. So we have had two youth Parliament representatives in the last two years, one deputy, Captain Plain, who is in year 13 at the moment. And we had Hannah Powell, who was the member of youth Parliament for Bath and the local area. And she got to speak at the House of Commons. She did an amazing um, speech on poverty and homelessness and you can see her there and we're really proud of her but that's the kind of thing you know if you're interested in politics we want you to be able to reach for these kind of heights we want you to be able to get experience doing these things we very much want the year 12s to be involved in mock elections that we run mock hustings and we do lots of debates as well we want you to understand power challenge your own beliefs and become informed citizens because that is what politics is all about so we cannot wait to meet you. Um, we've been really impressed by the transition projects that I've seen so far. Politics never stops and neither do we. So we want you to keep reading, keep watching and have a really productive and enjoyable summer. And I hope the restrictions don't ruin your summer too much and you're still able to have a really good time and come back refreshed and ready to start debating. <laughs>